congratulations. <clears throat> uh, was that the first time you guys have seen this with an audience present? Yeah. yeah, it was really exciting. Was there any sort of surprises of the feedback that was in the room? The, the murmur of recognition of Mark Shaman's first appearance. <laughs> I don't think that's something we can spoil ourselves in getting used yeah. to. Uh, great crowd. Thank you guys for... Uh... <laughs> thank you for coming, by the yeah, way. Thank you guys so much for coming. And... <laughs> um, Billy's got to answer this in character, but what do you guys think is the greatest injustice in show business right now? <laughs> Oh. That's a good question. High definition. Wait, your, your mic should work. I just had this because I don't have one. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think they oh, I didn't know. I thought we were. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think the greatest injustice is that I don't have a fucking GLAAD award. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Washington has a GLAAD award. <laughs> She's not gay. <laughs> uh, Shonda Rhimes doesn't follow me on Twitter. None of Harrison Ford's children follow me on Twitter. When that plane went down, I made a couple of jokes once I knew he was okay. And then I went and looked to see if, uh, like what his kids tweeted and none of them were following me. That was bullshit. <laughs> I'm just gonna be doing a lot of this. <laughs> a lot of laughing. <laughs> you don't have a show business injustice right now? I, I guess probably like high definition cameras are not nice. Uh, so to backtrack a bit, how did you guys all get to know each other? Uh, Billy and I met because we were fans of each other's work mm -hmm. online, and um, we had gotten together once or twice to talk about collaborating, and then um, Billy got his show and uh, hired me to write for it, and so we kind of got to know each other from working on Billy on the <laughs> Street. Yeah. And, um, and Amy I'd known from, from UCB and... Yeah. Yeah. And we, I'd known their work for many years and then Julie sent me a script, her pilot episode of, of What Became Difficult People and right away <clears throat> um, it had that thing that you're always looking for which is it just had a really specific tone and voice and the chemistry between the two of them is, as you can tell, very, very real. <laughs> yeah, um, Julie was one of the first people I contacted when Billy on the Street was sold as a TV show. And uh, we'd known each other a little bit, and we were mutual fans, and we had a very short amount of time the first season of Billy on the Street to put it together. And I started panicking, because I'd never done a TV show. Um, and so I called Julie and I said, I don't know what this show is going to be, but I know I need you to work on it. And, uh, and she said yes immediately, and... and then we shot Kevin Spacey Leapfrog, which has not been shown on... Don't Leon. give it away! Oh, are we reshooting it or not? Well, we might. Well, if we don't, I want to tell them about it. <laughs> Bo Williman is in this building right now. Good, he should know! Don't talk about my best friend Kevin Spacey, <laughs> who also doesn't have a GLAAD award, There by is... <laughs> He and Queen Latifah, oddly enough, <laughs> would share one. They should host. They're they the should next, host uh, the Tonys. James Franco and, uh, yeah, exactly. James Franco and Anne Hathaway. Although I think Kristen Chenoweth and Alan Cumming are our Queen Latifah and Kevin Spacey. <laughs> what, if it, what if it turns out that they're just two Tic Tacs? <laughs> <laughs> Alan Cumming, he's bisexual. Give me a break. <laughs> I love Alan Cumming. Though. We all do. We all, we all do. love Alan Cumming. And we would all have sex with him. We all yeah. would, right? Yeah. yeah. We're all we're all eligible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a raffle at the end of the show. <laughs> uh, how did the idea of a sort of autobiographical style show land as the idea that you guys decided to pursue? Um, I I. I drew a lot from, well, I just wanted to do something playing a version of myself and Billy playing a version of himself. And I, uh, I, I wanted to, um, you know, just sort of draw from personal experience. So a lot of the, the, the stories in the first season are from things I've spoken about in my monologue uh, from my podcast. So there's some stories that have to do with either uh, me or us embarrassing ourselves or, or people from the world just, you know, pissing us off that um, we, like, drew from and kind of made, like, slightly bigger, but there's 
certain things in there that are pretty true to what actually happened. Like the Mark Shaman thing actually happened. Like I met him at a party. Yes. And, and Billy was there and like, it was really uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, I love Mark and I love Julie and we were at a birthday party for Bridget Everett. At Mark's house. At Mark's house. Well, it used to be his house. It's a long story. <laughs> uh, and a fascinating one. Fascinating. <laughs> Take it away, Bill. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I met, we were at this birthday party, and I've known Mark a long time, and Bridget forever, and Julie, and I thought, oh, you know who's going to love Julie Klausner is Mark Shane. I've been a huge fan of his forever, and so... Of course, I, and so I said, yeah. Mark, you've got to meet my friend Julie Klausner. You are going to love each other. And he said, oh, yeah, you know, people have been recommending your podcast to me for so long, and the one time I turned it on, you were ripping apart Smash. <laughs> He listened to the Smash podcast, and I love Smash, so we clearly didn't get the big picture, but he was just like, you were ripping apart that last song. By the way, you did not love Smash. <laughs> I did love Smash. I love Smash. Oh my God. Catherine, I mean, Catherine McPhee in a green hooded unitard is, as far as I'm concerned, the last thing that could have saved the peacock. <laughs> um, anyway, so I just met this guy. He confronted me immediately. Yeah. And I went and I hid in his bathroom for 15 minutes. <laughs> I read Twitter, and in and, and this version, I uh, you know, kind of fight back a little bit, but um, that's pretty much exactly what happened. And then five minutes later, I met Victor Garber. Yeah. <laughs> Rest is history. Um, Rest is history. That is what I like about Difficult People, is the characters of Julie and Billy talk a lot of shit with each other. And then we have moments throughout the season where they are confronted with the stuff that they've said, or they have to deal with the repercussions of how they're acting. And at times, they step into it, and other times, they just they don't, um, they don't quite know what to do. How did you wind up calling Mark Shaman then to be on the show? After that was an email that went through a couple drafts, honestly. <laughs> I emailed Mark, and I, I, I know Mark, and I feel like, well, A, he, he was getting a chance to sort of get revenge against Julie in this episode. <laughs> Uh, and he, you know, everyone's smart, and I think Smash is one of those things that they're all fully aware that, you know, that was a show that faced a lot of criticism. I just want to make sure people know I really did love Smash. Yes, I'm, I, was just, I was just kidding. God forbid this gets back to Megan Hilty. <laughs> just telling you. Who I love is an extremely talented love person. <laughs> um, Mark, you know, Mark has a good sense of humor, and I think he liked the idea of it. And, uh, you know, people are smart, and I find that in this sort of social media world that we're in, people are very aware of, their, of the criticism about themselves. <laughs> you know, all of us have that weak moment when we Google our names and we see what people are saying about us. And I think if you're smart, you actually kind of dive in and just laugh it off, you know? How did you guys decide which celebrities are playing characters on the show and which celebrities are themselves or real. Because there's, even in this episode, we have Kate McKinnon, but she's not Kate McKinnon. There's, and then I've seen another episode, sorry. Uh, <laughs> and that sort of a similar thing where some people are themselves and some people aren't. Is the world of the show, like, set? Uh, there's definitely some, some crossover, some gray area, but we're not, like, self-referential about it. Like, um, we have Jackie Hoffman plays a character, Fred Armisen plays a character, um, Seth Meyers plays a character, uh, uh, we have Martin Short playing himself. Debbie Harry plays a character, character really yeah. that's close to Debbie Harry. Um, and what else had, is she going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Not the most versatile actor. Um, Although she's... Considered um, she's, for Nell? I know. Yeah. <laughs> she's considered for Nell. You don't know that story? Debbie Harry was the original Nell. Nell until Jodie Foster snuck in there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a combination of like... I would have liked to have heard Blondie's soundtrack to Nell, though. Do you remember Nell with the girl yeah, in the like, woods? But with like gibberish lyrics under like Heart of Glass. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's... Amy piped up for a while. I always... yeah. <laughs> I feel like Primus would have scored now. <laughs> oh, somebody took a little poop poop before the. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the bong thing to say. The bong fueled uh, musing. The the celebrity thing uh, came down to like 
opportunity plus what it would be fun to see. Um, we, we knew Amy Sedaris wanted to do the show, so it was like, well, we could write something for her as Amy Sedaris, but like she's so great at characters that we'd be you know, missing an opportunity if she hadn't played a character, which she ended up doing. So there's no rules, no. <laughs> no rules, no just rules. right. Yeah. Fred Armisen, oh, you said, Fred Armisen plays my brother in an episode. <laughs> Um, which I think is one of our fav- both of one of our favorites, and uh, he's really great, and he's not Fred Armisen at all, and he's such a brilliant actor, Fred, and he plays a very Jewish guy. It's really, it's funny. Is there anything else you guys can tell us about what happens over the course of the season? We grow, we learn. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> at one point, we fuck. Um, <laughs> Who am I, Alan Cumming? I couldn't get it up. Uh, what happens during what the happens <laughs> well there's a there's a lot of Julie and Billy just kind of trying to like make the, their next move right so we like Julie's like like struggling writing recaps Billy's working in this cafe and it's kind of like based on them in a way about 10 years ago or something when they were feeling like outsiders but fe- also feeling the funniest and smartest in the room which they usually are so it was like What's so great about the show is the banter between Julie and Billy is just filled with jokes just like them, right? That's how they talk is they just joke and joke and joke and joke and joke and go for it and go for it and go for it. And so it allows the show and Julie's writing to be packed with jokes. Um, but it does kind of start to tell you a little bit of something about how they interact with each other. So there's little moments throughout the season where we start to learn what the two want and a, and, and, uh, a smoke monster at the end. Yeah, there's a smoke monster at the end. Which is the character that Amy Sedaris plays. Right. And um, no, uh, we also just constantly get in our own way. I, I mean, I think it's a combination of us, you know, knowing that show business is unfair and we're both very hungry to succeed. But even though we're right in that show business is unfair, we're also wrong in how we go about pursuing our goals. Um, mm-hmm. So we end up looking like assholes at most episodes. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing about Julie and I, uh, for better or for worse, we're not very adaptable people. (laughs) Um, And I think a lot of comedy can spring from that. And sometimes, like Julie said, it gets in your own way, like in this episode where he just has this idea that if you, you know, a participator is so embarrassing, but ultimately ends up liking the guy and squandering a missed opportunity because of that. And uh, what I think is cool for people who already know Julie and I is that We're known for like our banter and this sort of pop culture obsession. And although this is still a comedy and it's not, you know, it's sort of, I don't want to say sitcom, it's a half hour, half hour scripted comedy, but you get to sort of go behind the scenes a little bit and see us as more three dimensional people. And we have families and relationships and, you know, I think that's, that's interesting for people who already know us especially. And it's got the bitterness and the sadness that any, <laughs> anyone struggling to make a name for themselves in a creative way, it, 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 I, think it, I think it speaks to that uh, truthfully. Amy, you also are a producer for Broad City. Mm-hmm. So now you have... <laughs> are there any current plans to add more shows into your producer portfolio? Is it going to be like... Yeah. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a, few, a few things coming down the line, hopefully. But, um, I mean, it's, look, Billy and Julie are the funniest. Like, they're just so funny. And so the opportunity to get to do a show like this, which was, like, really kind of, like, leaning into comedy and what it's like to work in comedy and how everyone is not the same in comedy. And also just to watch a show about truly difficult people who make their lives more difficult or or actually who do who do things that are more difficult than other people do like it's just um so i'm very lucky to be involved in it and excited to be part of it and uh yeah and 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 it feels like you know at um paper kite at my production company we're just trying to do stuff that i would watch and uh, I would binge watch the shit out of this show <laughs> if I had nothing to do with it. Um, and so um, it's a nice feeling to be able to work with such talented people. That's nice. <laughs> You're also very talented. Thank you, Billy. <laughs> I, think, I think you look thin today. Amy. Thank you, Julie. I think your new hair color is working, you, don't Billy. you? 
You see him. I think your sons are cute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Didn't love baby mama, if I'm being honest. Not a fan. Not a fan. It holds up. It had its moment. Take another look. I'll say yes. It holds up. It holds up. It actually sure it does. does hold up on a rainy day. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I will say, uh, you know, it's, um, it's very, you know, Julie and I were outliers uh, in the comedy world. I mean, Julie was at UCB and I did shows at UCB, but, you know, we were never the people getting called by SNL to be on that show or, or, or even like The Daily Show. We were just, it took us a moment to sort of get into the comedy, professional comedy industry, and it's really taken the support of people with vision and balls and good fucking taste, like Amy Poehler, <laughs> um, seriously, to get behind people like us and Abby and Alana, and that really, it really changes people's lives. And so, thank you, Amy Poehler. Oh my God, my pleasure. <laughs> Do you remember when you said to yourself, you know what, I want to be a comedian professionally, like that's where my career is going, that's what I want to do? Mm. I interned at Strangers with Candy, and it was season two, wow. and the UCB TV show was on one floor, and the Strangers with Candy was on another, and when I saw Amy and Steven and Paul making that show, and writing it, and getting to be in it, I thought, what what better way is there to spend your life? I, I just was so impressed by them and just, I completely fell in love. I thought that seemed like the most fun thing ever. <laughs> what about you guys? Do you remember if there was like, how old you were or anything? Uh, yeah, when I was like five or six, I said, I really want to scream at people on the street. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that'll open up a lot of doors. <laughs> Boy, was I right. <laughs> Um, no, I mean, uh, I actually, and I've talked about this before, but I wasn't a, a comedy, a full-on comedy person until a little later, you know? I wasn't like an Aziz who was doing stand-up at 16 or, or someone who's like watching us. I loved SNL and I, I was a kid. I loved comedy, but I didn't think, oh, that's what I want to do until a little later. I was more of like a traditional actor, musical theater. <laughs> type of guy, and then <laughs> when I got to New York after college, I went to Northwestern, and when I got to New York, Ooh. ow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, Charlton Heston also went there, so watch. Oh. You know. uh, I love guns. <laughs> Can you guys all just write that down, that I love guns? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, Remember when Tom Selleck went on the Rosie O'Donnell show? Do I? I have a JPEG of that on my phone. You to send. Do? I have all kinds of things in the photo gallery of my phone on deck waiting to send them to you. When wow. needed. When needed. You've already sent me so many. I know. But that would never happen to, like, no one's going on Fallon to talk about the NRA. Do you know what I mean? Well, also, Fallon doesn't have it in his back pocket. It's not like Fallon's going to have an agenda. To well, he doesn't like, have I'm a political gonna... agenda. What? <laughs> <laughs> um... I don't, does, Amy, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, I got into comedy later, and, uh, I, but I did kind of find myself there, and you kind of, it's a tough industry. You have to find a way to separate yourself from everyone else, and for me, comedy and generating my own weird comedy thing uh, was, was very helpful and ultimately satisfying. I also just want to mention that a lot of, you know, my, my path involved taking a lot of detours and trying a lot of different things, and... Um, and, and you see that in the show as well. People who are like, no, I don't want to say directionless, but just when you're young and you think you can do everything and then it just <laughs> turns out that you just need to do something. So that's something that we also show a little bit. Also just in the comedy world, there's so many small subsets and like thin slices and versions and, and often everyone is kind of lumped together and they're very, very different. And so it's like taking it the small world and just like even making it more specific whether it be like podcasters or stand-ups or sober magicians or, uh, you know, the sober we magicians. We make fun of all those people. We make fun of all those subsets <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the show. And that's what's also great about it is we're not afraid to be, like, too uh, niche. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Julie and I have done all those things. Like, yeah. <laughs> we were people who were like, no one's hiring us. Let's make a podcast. Let's do a one-man show. Like, right. Maybe I should try stand-up. What if I get a wig and do a character? Like, right, literally, exactly. Like... You're just grasping for so long. <laughs> 
um, in your 20s, and these people are in their <laughs> mid 30s, 30s and doing the same thing, and still grasping, yeah. which I think lends it a little bit of a sad, mm -hmm. desperate quality. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, it also maybe adds to it a little bit. Did you get any good advice along the way that has stuck with you that left a lasting impression? Bradley Cooper has helped me every step of the way. <laughs> He did the Elephant Man just to get your attention. Yes. It was like... And you know what? He got it. Have you, I've never seen a production of the Elephant Man where you wanted to jerk off during it. <laughs> He's shirtless and like, hot. the Elephant Man was fucking hot in that production. Wait till you see his flowers for Algernon. <laughs> Shout out to everyone involved in the film Aloha, by the way. Oh. Which is a, that's a whole other Q&A. Well, yeah, can we limit the Q&A to just questions about Aloha? Oh. Because I, I haven't seen it, you haven't seen it. No oh. one has seen it. We would love your questions It's a about problem it. when there's a movie about Hawaii and the closest thing to a person of color is Danny McBride. <laughs> and I love Cameron Crowe and everyone. <laughs> When I tweet that later, just pretend you're hearing it for the first time. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to get such a good work. It work, it work. Uh, this is just a Twitter workshop. <laughs> but you that know should what? be our next job. That is a good job. <laughs> but you guys say what you will tweet, which is not, everyone, not the case for everyone, because writing is different than saying. Like, saying things out loud is different That's than writing true. them down. And you guys talk in that way that you would tweet. We, we came up with a joint tweet uh, when Bill, Co not Bill Cosby, Eddie Murphy said that he no. wasn't going to make fun. No, Bill Cosby. No, wait. No. Eddie Murphy. Oh, Eddie. No, this was it. This was it. This was on the set of Difficult, the, the difficult SNL People. Eddie Murphy Eddie, said he yeah, wasn't going right, to make fun of Bill Cosby because he's not going to kick a man when he's down. Right. And we were like, we like came up with this together. It was like, <laughs> like Eddie Murphy won't kick a man when he's down. He'll only blow a man if he's in a dress or something. <laughs> not exactly it, but... It's close to what, and we were, it was not well received by... Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. In the first episode of Difficult People, Julie's character very, like, quickly uh, tweets something that Billy laughs at, and then they go about their day, and it turns into a giant mess. Yeah. And she gets a lot of shit for it, and she has to have this moment where she has to figure out, am I going to apologize for it? And it's just so indicative of Julie's writing and I think of the tone of the show which is you just assume that the character is going to be like I'm sorry and she's like I'm I I I wish you thought it was funnier I think it's funny yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean like I yeah. if, if 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 I took it down because everyone was angry about it but if they liked it I would have kept it exactly. up Exactly and then someone's saying like no say you're sorry and it's just like if you they said something like you know if um, you just took it down because people didn't like it, and I'm like, well, if people liked it, I would have left it up, of course. Like, but yeah. just no, you know, commitment to exactly why I was wrong, and like, oh, that wasn't bad taste, and I regret it. And then in the second episode, I do a thing where I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that um, it is interesting because people like Julie and I will will say how we see how we feel in public more than the average person, and if people get angry. You do have this internal conflict, which we deal with in the show, which is, are we bad people? Like, mm -hmm. we're, I don't know, is it okay to be honest? Or it was just a joke? Is it okay if you offend people? Because right. you kind of just want to be like all punk rock and be like, fuck you, I don't care. And part of you yeah, feel, which Andy, is very punk rock, Andy, that voice yeah. I just did. <laughs> but, uh, but then you're Andy Dick. <laughs> We did not even come close to answering that question. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's okay. Water, maybe? <laughs> yes. yeah. I'm going to take Margaret's water and give it to you. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. um, on the show, you guys are very much peas in a pod, and obviously here, there seems like you guys are similar in a lot of ways. Are there fundamental ways that you guys are super, super different, whether it's like in taste or there are certain jokes that you love that he hates? Is there a conflict there ever? I love animals. Billy doesn't care for them. It's not that I don't care for them. <laughs> it's that I'm very allergic to cats especially, and anyone who knows Julie, it's like cats all day and all night. I have one 
cat and I just talk about him constantly. Yeah, but <laughs> why do you love cats? And you like I think being... animals are like really, really funny and adorable and hilarious. And I think they're isn't... cute. Well, yeah, but like people would send you photos of like their cats watching Billy on the street, and you were like, "Why are people sending me these photos? Like, what am I supposed to do with them?" I was like, but I'm, I'll, I still retweeted them. <laughs> I'll tweet. I'll retweet anything. But um, no, I, that's one way we differ. Uh, on the show, Julie, as you saw, insisted that even though her and, and Arthur played, uh, I think, wonderfully oh. by James Urbaniak. Uh, it, they have these two Basset hounds, even though they live in this small. Those are Basset hounds. Mm -hmm. Even though they live in a small apartment, but and it's a, it's very, it even is, it's smaller in real life than it looks, and you're crammed into this little tiny set with these dogs all day. One was so and stupid. One was very dumb. It was not trained. <laughs> and you know, I didn't, I didn't like them. <laughs> like them. Um, How else are we different? Well, I'm like more of like a homebody. Like you know, I like to stay home. And yeah, that's like, true. My, my cat, like my apartment, is very like decorated and yeah. well lived in. And you, I have of, nothing like, on my walls. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like to go out and just live. <laughs> I love, and a, I like I love to, a party. I love and an I, event. I love just slowly dying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, knowing my cat will eat my remains. <laughs> How sad that there'll be no one to eat my remains. I know. You I, can I hire someone. You, you can day. get an assistant or something. <laughs> There's guys that are into that. Maybe Ryan Murphy will do it. <laughs> it's just a thought. We're just spitballing here. Yeah. Are there ideas that sort of fell into the idea graveyard for this season where it was like something that you guys both really liked but it just didn't work for the episode and it's like, oh, I, I want the chance to use this material. Yes, and God willing, if we get a, a season two, we'll use it then. So we're not gonna tell ya! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, <laughs> tell you the ideas that we may use again, oh, pass. Or like the bad ones. Um, but uh, yeah, Julie wrote the season really fast and uh, because of the kind of timeline that we were on and it, uh, and it was really impressive. And, and uh, it was, uh, there's just a lot, there's a lot happening in the show. As you can tell, like there's just so much going by really fast. It's pretty that dense it's with really jokes dense. And, and plot, and, but there's still room for Julie and I to improvise. And, and I will say that, um, because people know Julie and I are friends, we kind of sometimes both get credited for coming up with the show, which is not fair because Julie created the show. Julie wrote all the scripts. Uh, I think there were some writers, but with, essentially. And yeah, with Scott King, who's with Scott a King, back, our showrunner, show runner, who's amazing. Broke who story we love. with me. And but this is really Julie's brainchild. Oh my God, that's my phone. There's this emergency Kevin Spacey. flood warning. Guys, it's Kevin Spacey. Oh my God, I got it. Uh, there's an emergency you're alert. A, you're a male a under flash 20. Flood! <laughs> We all got it. Steve Jobs from the grave saying, why is, why is Michael Fassbender playing me? Oh, he's so happy about that. Oh, no, he's good. Thrilled. We've already seen his dick. He's been vetted. Please, one, oh. if Ashton Kutcher's played you and then you get Michael Fassbender, thank oh, God. The promotion. God. Um, it's like the kiddish. She rises higher Who would play you guys in the movie of Difficult People? Who would you want to have play you in the movie? <sighs> You got depressed. You got depressed. <laughs> I feel like Michael Fassbender would, that would be a good person to play I, in the difficult yeah, people movie. He would be terrific. He's always great. <laughs> um, Swoozy Kurtz. I just sent you Swoozy Kurtz's Tony Award acceptance speech on YouTube. Oh, right, 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 right. I haven't gotten to it yet. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Someone gets a Hulu show and she gets all <laughs> fancy. Yeah, yeah, clearly. I don't clearly know who would play me. You know, uh, John Larroquette in Stripes looks exactly like me. Oh, I never thought about that. <clears throat> I would fuck the shit out of John Larroquette. <laughs> and uh, it's also so lovely when someone comes up to me and says, you know who you look like? Ugh. Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone wanted, a hairy Bobby Flay. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Look, 
let's talk a little bit about um, autobiography. Amy wrote an autobiography recently. The show is very... <laughs> Uh, the show is very autobiographical in some capacities. How much, how hard is it to access that kind of like vulnerability? Because if you're telling a story that's about yourself, every piece of feedback is somehow a referendum, not just on the material, but on you. Is that hard? Is that a relief? I'm, I'm planning on taking all comments about the show very personally, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> like, no, I mean, like when you set out to, like how, um, how hard is it to pull the trigger and say, like, you know what, I'm doing this, even though it's, it's going to be hard and to put myself out there and, and to, if I'm going to write honestly about myself, I have to be honest with myself at least a little bit. For, for me, I, I get to that fearlessness by uh, evoking, um, this is going to sound queer, but, and I like the word queer, so fuck all of you people that don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, that's going to be my attitude going forward, by the way, with trans stuff. Is that oh. cool, that, my point of view? All right, we'll talk Maybe about not. it. not. Um, <laughs> what's a little, like, you know. <laughs> what I try to do when I get nervous about putting myself out there is I think about the compassion of the audience, and, and I think about w would what I do affect some... My, I usually think about a girl my age or younger, and, and would, that, would that affect her in a, in a good way? And, and if it does, then I feel more comfortable putting myself out there. I, mm. I think about, like, is this good for, is this, is this good for girls um, sometimes? Uh, a lot, actually. Yeah, you yeah. do. You, you operate. That is mm -hmm. one, that is your, that's one of Julie's tenets, for sure. Like, and, and she's a, like a person of the world. She's a real human person of the world. And I, I say that because... She is a woman, right? And like, I think there's a lot, like a lack of, um, in t I'm starving for television that have women in them. Cause there's a lot of, uh, uh, it's true. There's, there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of young girls. And then there's a lot of television about like cu couples. And there's so many people in between there, like not having their first job or sexual experience and also not like living like a sexless marriage or hating their job. Like there's a lot of people in between. <laughs> um, so I think I, 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 Julie has that, um, that, sh that steers her for sure. And, and in the show, they go, they, they touch upon stuff that's very um, personal, not, not autobiographical all the time, but it like, but, but feels like vulnerable and they write honestly. And I think that uh, especially young audiences like, can really, really sniff out in authenticity. And they just won't buy it anymore. I mean, like, everyone here under the age of 25 is brown and gay, but also, <laughs> <laughs> let's hope. <laughs> but is also, but they're also My like favorite coffee shop, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the blend, the people of color blend. You won't believe oh, it. Gorgeous coffee. The soy. Oh. Yes, the Zoe Kravitz is my favorite latte. <laughs> Zoe, Zoe. <laughs> So. But, they, but they have been grown up with all this like internet stuff so they know what's real and what's not real. And so it's the same way with like Julie and Billy's relationship is very real, the way they talk about their career and, and is very real. And I think people can sense that now. So you have to kind of, you just kind of can't go in to projects anymore um, without a specific voice that feels authentic. And I also think that um, there's somewhere in between, like, I'm only going to write about my own experience and therefore represent people that are exactly like me versus I, I know someone who experienced something similar and I can translate that idea or I have a memory of something and that made me feel a certain way. But I, I do think it all has to come from, uh, from, from something true. I mean, in, in the episode, you saw the fight I had with Arthur. That, I mean, I feel like everyone's had that version of a fight where someone's like trying to give you advice and you just want to be heard and, you know, you're like, be sympathetic. But you, the other person's like, I don't love you enough, essentially. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's also great stuff with Andrea Martin as Julie's mom is amazingly funny stuff. Andrea Martin is so funny. She so basically good. plays like an unbelievable narcissist who is... Um, just, um, you'll see. <laughs> yeah. You guys mentioned that that's, those are some of like, the things that guide Julie as a writer. Are there things that you hold in that kind of regard that you would consider that guides you in the same capacity? Considered what, I'm sorry? That, that, the kinds of stuff that you hold as dear as that idea or the, the sort of emotional rudder that provides? 
Oh, Your whole well thing said. is, would it hurt Andy McDowell's feelings? Yeah. <laughs> and if it does, I press send. <laughs> um, although that Andy McDowell show. Oh, we can't talk. We can't start talking about that. The country judge one. I. It's some, there's something nice about it. Cedar- <laughs> okay. Um, you know what's right, anyway. What was I going to say? Yeah, I mean. I'm not sure if this answers your question. I mean, I think, yeah, th- look, this show's very, uh, in show business, like if you do one thing that gets popular, in my case, Billy on the street, people want to see you as that one thing, you know? And he screams on the street and he's crazy and I love doing that and it's gonna go on for a minute, but, um, <laughs> uh, and, and I love it, it's, it's a ridiculous thing to do and it's, it's a lot of fun, uh, but, what is, what I embrace kind of the more vulnerable, more serious things that happen in this show because I think only Julie know, there are very few people uh, that have Julie's level of talent, especially who would have believed that I could do those things and, and do more than just banter about pop culture and be a real person and be seen in that way. So it was a real, to use a cheesy term, like gift for Julie to think of me for this uh, because I get to do all these other things and show this other side Billy's of Billy's really a good, like a great actor. No, no, no. Northwestern, you know, ladies. <laughs> I wasn't saying that, but like... No, just but you <laughs> really are good in it, and you really do show a range of things that people don't get to see on Billy on the street, and, yeah. and vulnerability and frustration, and like, you know, where the anger comes from. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, bottom line is, I better get a fucking GLAAD award for that. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Kidding. Are there other shows that are on right now that, like, if you know, you could wave a magic wand, you would be on or have a guest arc on? Be on? Or get guest arc on? Mm. You like Game of Thrones? <laughs> it would be fun to you see play you a on dragon that. or something. I would. In, 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 in like horns. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Sound, I'm gonna say something real douchey, but I read all of the books. <laughs> Sorry, I know. <laughs> I know, sorry. I know, so I'm a fan. I'm a fan of George R.R. R. Martin. I often wonder when I'm watching that show, like, has, like, I always wonder, like, has, you know, Kit Harrington and, uh, um, you know, um, Lena um, Headley, like, ever been in the same country? Like, <laughs> I think things like that. It's like so she's I, like Nell, like, bah, yeah, bah, bah, bah. <laughs> Actually, I did it. That was my written monologue for my Nell audition. <laughs> we should we should see. I wish they had tapes of the Nell audition. Oh, they do. Oh. <laughs> Go to it, Internet. When you host SNL, you got to pitch that. Um, <laughs> like, remember Nell from 1996? Yeah, that'll, that'll be how the monologue starts. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> you got a great show. Imagine Dragons is here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. I just want to play a nosy neighbor on literally anything. <laughs> I, I don't think people have female character actors. Yeah. Amy wants more real representations of women on television. I just want more nosy neighbors. <laughs> I, I, I think that was a really great thing that you know character actresses had to do for years, and then they just stopped. Do you remember that great nosy neighbor in Traps in the Closet, Rosie the Nosy Neighbor? And- yeah! And she was so nosy, she had a spatula. <laughs> and she had, I think her hair was in curlers. She was so nosy. Yeah, Rosie. <laughs> that was her game. That was her name, was Rosie game. the Nosy. You're yeah. kind of the ultimate nosy Thank neighbor. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, well, I used to tell people who asked me if I'd grown up from the small wonder, if I was Harriet grown up, and I'd always say yes. Always say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you do look yeah. remarkable. Emma, Emily like. uh, Shulman, I think her name is. <laughs> always say yes when someone asks, especially Tele- if it's unflattering. Always say yes. <laughs> Television has always wanted to see a young John Larroquette with a fake Harriet from Small Wonder <laughs> put together. Grapple with things that no Finally. one can relate to except for people in show business. Anyway, it's a great show. <laughs> it's a hard sell. Was it a hard sell? Mm, Hulu completely loved it and got it and like, honestly, like their notes are so nothing that they just really loved it and put their money where their mouth was. I mean, we're so lucky to have that. I have to say, like, 
they saw the pilot, so we had the benefit of being able to show them something that we made instead of like, you know, a pitch or a script, it's still not the thing. And they saw it and they knew exactly what it was and they said, we love it. And that's, that's something that we're really, really grateful for. How short was the turnaround? Because I feel like from the first time I heard it was happening to like, I got to see it in leading up to this was really short. Oh, did it feel like that to you? <laughs> <laughs> Scott? Interesting. Yeah. It was a very short turnaround. And to Julie's credit, uh, she just went to work and came up with eight like really funny, really strong scripts. Uh, Scott and I were in the office during Thanksgiving. We, he had in, I had Indian, and he had pizza. And we just, uh, we're not holiday people. It's fine, you know? <laughs> and um, look. You get the opportunity to write the show. Like, when I sat down to write the pilot that I sent you, I, I thought to myself, I says, self, what if you... <laughs> uh, if you could write the show that, you know, you wanted to make more than anything, your dream show, and you're not thinking about, like, well, you know, what is so-and-so buying? And the cynical sort of, like, what would it be? And, and this is the thing that I thought of, and, and now I get to do it, so... You know, my, my point is, fuck Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> food's not good, you know? It's like, Thanksgiving dinner is like my favorite dinner. Is it really? That's your oh, favorite me food? Too. Me when too. I go to an Italian one. friend's, um, I, I like it, but just that, like, like braised turkey? It's all, it all makes me feel awful. Like, when I eat, it makes me feel awful, but it's like, would be my last meal. Me I too. I love really? stuffing. No, I, like I love stuffing. <laughs> You don't I like the stuff. I, well, I do like who doesn't and like cranberry. Oh, start cranberry sauce. So is delicious. hungry right now. I'm so hungry. It's delicious. Are you kidding me? Oh, turkey, yeah, that's a, potatoes. a really sweet potato and like a corn, like a creamed <laughs> corn, like a good creamed corn, which is a little oh, corn. Oh, a good creamed corn. You just said <laughs> oh. creamed corn is fucking delicious. Like on a that's on something, a, on that's a low, on like bread the next George day. George R. R. Martin have in common is creamed <laughs> corn. <laughs> I'm sure. Could you imagine the I two would love of you? To go to dinner with, for, with oh, George R. Martin oh, and Eve. That's our Thanksgiving this year. Across the country. I would love to be so far away from that. <laughs> <laughs> Not even like apple pie or something? Maple syrup? Oh. Put maple syrup in your squash. That shit. Are you kidding? Oh, that's just a good idea all year round. Yeah. A just pecan pie? In. Fine. I love Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Are there shows that you guys watch now that you think, oh, they're doing that right. This is something that I, uh, is informing the way I think about comedy just because this show is so good. Louis. Louis. That was, I was gonna say Louis. This, this season of Louis, and I know it was a half season, um, which may be a contribution to why I, you know, I'm so excited about it because I left me wanting more, but the first episode and that finale, boy, like, it just not, it, it it made me like, it, it, it made me feel like challenged as a creative person to one day do something that was as, uh, that, that's as great and as like weird and singularly minded. Mm -hmm. And he has like the balance of the, the sketchy stuff and the real stuff, like down to a science yeah. now. So he can do like the weird kind of like announcements at the airport, but then at the same time when he's in the plane seat being exhausted and disgusting, it's completely authentic. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just, Love, love that show. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the spectrum, uh, this is not a joke, even though I, I mentioned her in the episode coincident coincidentally, Wendy Williams, yeah. <laughs> I'm not kidding, is on the top of her game right now. <laughs> I know you think I'm joking. Watch, when, watch all the other talk shows, and, and, I, and I'm a huge talk show fanatic, and that's like most of what I watched. Andy Cohen's amazing too, I think that shows. And Andy has a similar thing to Wendy, but even uh, Wendy more so. You watch like the late night comedy guys, man, they're at it, and they're like jokes, and like, oh, they're grasping for laughs, and you know, it's amazing when it works, and a lot of them are incredible. No one has more joy on TV every day than Wendy Williams. Yeah. She's so happy to have this show. <laughs> yeah. It's so such an unlikely story. It's such an unlikely hit. Oprah left, so there's a clear runway. In a way, 
In a way, it's like watching the show, like that, that segment on the news about the woman that won the lottery, only it's the same woman every day. Yes, <laughs> but I, I love her because everyone else is really jaded. Like you, you're secretly like dreaming for this TV success. Then you get it and you're like, yeah, whatever. Uh-huh. I want to be in movies or, or whatever. And Wendy will sometimes, and I don't think it's fake, she will sometimes out of nowhere burst into tears <laughs> on the show because she just can't believe there's a studio. <laughs> And there are cameras. And deep down inside, we're all like that, but she's not too cool for school. (laughs) And I really like that. So it's Louis C.K. and Wendy Williams. (laughs) King and the Queen. (laughs) Is this four hours long? (laughs) It's long. It's fine. Yeah, is anyone getting bored? (laughs) You're just answering the questions. I had to write the questions. No, no, no. (laughs) Yeah, what? Jerry Seinfeld's coming back? Come on. Is he coming back around? Going to do a couple more tight tight six? (laughs) Uh, We had a bunch of Vulture readers send in some questions on Twitter, and by far the most popular question was, is Elena going to be on? Oh. (laughs) On difficult people? (laughs) Like, a lot of people. Elena and I can't be on camera together because we negate each other. <laughs> uh, Elena, uh, uh, Elena will not be on Difficult People. Be, you know, that would she just... Need, she needs a, it's like there's an Elena Wrangler. And oh, like, there is an Elena Wrangler. It's too much. And also, Elena is a, is a real person. Um, she doesn't work well in a scripted environment. <laughs> like, Elena has to we be unfiltered. From, yeah. Elena, for those of you that don't know, is an older woman who's a, a regularly recurring guest on Billy on the Street. Um, and she is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, we brought her to film uh, with Michelle Obama. She could not earlier, have cared less. She could earlier not have in the year. Less. Was there, she Michelle was excited Obama. for about a minute and then immediately Heard told it. Michelle Obama, I call the White House every week to complain. <laughs> I swear. Good God. <laughs> then Elena, none of this, we had to cut this out because it was too weird. But like, <laughs> and after the shoot was done, uh, we, we all stood around, including the current first lady of the United States and her entire team. And we stood around Elena while she went on a 20 minute <laughs> monologue about how she can't afford her life on social security. <laughs> to the first Good for her. lady. <laughs> So Elaine is too much to deal with, but she. W- but the that- rent, the rent is too damn high. Guy will definitely. Be. <laughs> <laughs> he will be playing my father, and he will be amazing. <laughs> Your father, father and lover. Uh, <laughs> she'll be back on Billy on the Street though, because we have to have her. <laughs> yeah. um, another question from Twitter, which I thought was like really sweet, was: Do you guys think you would have been friends as kids? Aww. <laughs> oh That's no, cute. and I'll tell you why. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, like I don't know, that. actually, but That's a nice uh, when kids like um, maybe not in high school, just because in high school I wasn't. Well, I anybody. think I'm older than them, I think, but um, I mean, I mean, I'm always those kind of questions. You guys are gonna make fun of me, but I'm always like, yeah, we would have all been friends. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think we would we would have been we would have been competitors, I think. We probably would have been up for like role, the same roles in the We would have been up for the same roles? Yes, we would have both been up for the same roles. Because we're the same type. Oh, like you We were gonna both play duty in Greece? I don't know about that. Like you haven't done a gender, a gender blind. It's time uh, for a transgender <laughs> Greece. I've been saying that. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. Fox is doing Greece live. Really? I think it should be, yes, all transgendered actors. <laughs> Why not? I think you and I would be, would be friends, actually. I think we would have been friends, and I think we should also co-star in The Wiz Live. <laughs> Dorothy, oh. Scarecrow, Neo is the Tin Man. <laughs> You know how uh, Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper are like touring now? Did you know that? Oh, Did no. you know this? They tour as like a Q and they do this, but they tour around and they make a shitload yeah, of money. Anderson Cooper sings a few standards and then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think if difficult people is a success, we should do that. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Don't but don't say yes. that out loud. They'll make yeah. you do it. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> 
Um, is there somebody who's like the dream person you would want to have on Difficult People? Mm. Well, Winnie Mandela's gone. <laughs> I always describe um, when people want to know about the characters, I always describe like this real thing that happened to me where I was like, and it was in a writing room for some show that I, I was like working on at the time. It was like a one off. And um, I remember like they, everyone was on their computer all day and they were reading the news out loud to each other in hopes that it would spark some jokes. And so uh, someone was like, oh, Nelson Mandela died. And I remember being like, oh. And then they said, Mandy Patinkin shaved his beard. And I said, what? (laughs) (laughs) The answer is Mandy Patinkin. He's fantastic. (laughs) Wonderful. It can't be that hard to get, right? I mean, why? Oh. Are you kidding me? He lives in Margaret, New York City. Andrew does a lot of Anything television. No. He works on Homeland most of the year. The rest of the time, I'm sure he's doing theater or with his family. It's very uh, difficult to get him. Manny <laughs> he doesn't need to do anything. He's a, he, he has nothing to prove. Uh, <laughs> he does, literally no, nothing. he doesn't. He, he did nothing. one season of Chicago Hope. Yeah. Won the Emmy and fucking took off. Yeah. He like dropped the mic. He is so talented. He's, He's a great actor. And I swear is. to God, uh, <laughs> yesterday for fun, I looked up the original New York Times Janet Maslin review of Yentl. Uh huh. <laughs> Not kidding. Did she mention his ass? You have to read this review. Did she like it? She did not like it. Oh. And, but she picked it apart in a really um, what was anti-woman oh, type of way. Fascinating of that it was another woman. Of- and all she did was talk about how, like, oh, Streisand wore two knitted hats in one scene, and that's all she talked about. Like, <laughs> I like Yentl because it's the only musical where only one person's allowed to sing. Yeah. <laughs> Think about the I audacity. <laughs> I love it. Of make, and, and having Mandy Patinkin. And, and he's like, oh, I'm here. Do I, that's my Mandy Patinkin. Uh, and I, <laughs> what's my song? And like, Barbara's like, no. Nope. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> the, the internet will be shocked we talked about Yentl at this point. <laughs> Here's my favorite part of Yentl. When Barbara Streisand... How do you narrow it down to one? Oh, because I know this one, because I like this one. When she is, like, frolicking with Amy Irving on the marriage sheets because they have to fuck on their wedding night, and and they they look for, like, blood, like, hymen blood on the sheets. Um, So they're like... (laughs) Hashtag hymen blood if you're on Twitter right now. So so, So Yentl has to, like... Like, give Amy Irving, like, she has to, like, kind of be like, oh, let's just have fun and jump up and down because, you know, she doesn't want to fuck her because then she'd see that he was a woman. And so she's jumping on the bed with her, but she has a glass of wine, and so she's just casually spilling red wine on the sheets. (laughs) I think it was a very good... It fixed a lot of things in the script. That scene fixed (laughs) a lot of things in the script. Oh, an amazing story. Anyway, you gotta go. Then I went onto the Yentl Wikipedia page. It was the a story play. Of, it was the, a play. The, the story of the making of that movie is insane. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that. But please look <laughs> up that scene. I'm sorry if I did a bad job describing it, but it really is. It, it's so. It's so weird. And when you think about what it's trying to replicate, you know, it, it's it's worth watching. <laughs> Are we, is there gonna be like a Yentl tribute episode in season two? Strides and um, on difficult people what, would be. That would be great. pretty amazing. That would be pretty great. Um, uh, uh, what, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> we're past the question. I think we said Mandy Patinkin and Barbara Streisand. <laughs> well, now we're adding in Barbara Streisand. See, I feel like she would be much harder to convince than Mandy Patinkin. Oh, we Patinkin. could get her. We I can't one, believe we you one, were talking uh, shit about Mandy uh, Patinkin. I'm not talking shit! <laughs> Wait, what? He is so hard to get! <laughs> Mandy, I'm he telling you, not Mandy easy. is he not easy like to get. He doesn't like TV. <laughs> he wants to sing, like, Yiddish songs in the basement <laughs> of a Jewish... He likes doing, like, not very busy. He is very busy. Yeah. Such, such a good actor. Yeah. I mean, I literally had a Chicago Hope poster in my locker. As a, oh! As a, I'm not talking shit. As I, a yeah. producer, if those guys were like, get me Manny Patinkin, I would I'd go right away, and I would go, and I would pick up a phone that was dead, connected to nothing, and I would say, can I get Manny Patinkin? No? Okay. And I would hang up and say, I can't get it. 
<laughs> we can't get him, he's too, he's too busy. But as far as doing like a Yentl themed episode. Tribute episode. I think Community already did that. <laughs> uh, oh, I love no. Ben Jiang yeah, I, uh, in that role. Wasn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Billy and Jacobs, Papa, can you hear me? <laughs> Yeah, Community never really did like big, like, like beaches. They never do like a beaches episode. There's Whoa. still time on Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo. <laughs> okay, next question, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go, go, go. No, I'm, it's not like an I'll agenda. Read it. Is Elena? No, no, oh, we already answered that one. Okay. <laughs> this was the discard file. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Nah. Ooh, I like this. I like Margaret editing. Mm. <laughs> yeah. mm. My sister asked me to ask about Jimmy Jazz. He's doing great. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. He's doing really. He's doing really well. He's doing really well. Every day he's a little more socialized. Because <laughs> yeah. um, he had a hard childhood. No, I'm not going to talk about my cat anymore. <laughs> Is there something that you think you're the only person who finds funny? That like, this makes me laugh, and so far I haven't found somebody else that laughs at it the same way? Mm. That Yentl scene I described. In <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, something I realized about like three quarters of the way in that I was just too deep not to finish it, but um, you know, maybe you had to see it, maybe you didn't, I don't know, but you know. I can't think of anything. I really like that. You know, sometimes you'll see a movie and you think that's the best movie I've ever seen, and then you realize everyone else hated that movie? Hmm. For me, that movie was Dan in real life. <laughs> With Steve Carell. Do you even remember that movie? Steve Carell, Juliette Binoche. I didn't see it. Wait, and I went to see it by myself. Uh, it was a very vulnerable time in my life, and I watched Dan in real life alone, and I thought, it's the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> and I have a distinct memory of that. You don't even remember that movie. I don't. I don't remember it. I, remember it. I didn't see it, though. No one saw it. And but people I do who think saw that it when like... you go to movies alone, you have a very different experience. Very true. Or if you watch it on a plane. If you watch it on uh, an airplane, yeah, it's a so. fucking masterpiece. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did just recently watch, um, I'm so behind on it, but that movie Snowpiercer. <laughs> that was such, that was the best movie I've ever seen. <laughs> it was so good, because that's not my genre. Like, you know, and a minute one, I was like, I, I, was, with, I was with Brooke, my, um, a partner, production partner, and we were we were flying, and we we're on the, the plane, and we were, we were watch, I was watching, and I was just like, they're on the, they're gonna be on the train the whole time, like. <laughs> <laughs> and I only say this because I'm not a, I don't go to the, I, I don't feel like any films are for me anymore. Like everything in the movie theater, like I don't want to see any of it. So. <laughs> not even Pitch Perfect wanna... too. <laughs> it's Aka awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So I think Snowpiercer's very funny. Snowpiercer, <laughs> Snowpiercer was Akka really, really good. <laughs> Snowpiercer was the name of my Herald team, oddly enough. <laughs> <laughs> Snowpiercer. That's the name of a... Uh, hey, Snowpiercer, can we get a suggestion from the audience? <laughs> Train. That's how, it, that's how it happened. That's how you wrote it. <laughs> so, I think we have time for one more question. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is there a time that you guys were working on the show where, like, a backstage joke or onset joke that was never going to make it to air and won't be in season two and it's not ruining it, just a funny incident from the set that would not be scripted that sticks in your mind as, like, a highlight of working on the show so far? Hmm. We're well, so th well I, I will say, these guys <laughs> shot this winter and it was so cold. And so a lot of the episodes are Julie and Billy acting in the cold, which is really, it's quite hard to, we, we didn't want it to look like it was the middle yeah, of winter. Exactly. So we're in light little fall jackets and freezing our ass off. So the sacrifices we have made for you people <laughs> are unrivaled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, um, anything that made it? I wish, I wish we had had time to be sillier. You know, it was just so fast. Yeah. We, were, we, we wrote it fast, we shot it fast, and um, Amy, 
uh, one of the one of the great and and by the way, I have gotten a lot of advice, and a lot of it has been from Amy, and I I love her book for that reason. And one of the many great things that was very helpful that Amy told me during the process was that uh, extra time never helped comedy. And maybe she just told that to trick me into writing <laughs> uh, <laughs> eight scripts in ten minutes. But um, but I, I that you know I decided that it was true. And yeah, I, the pressure of it, the the, yeah. the constraints of it, something that to lean up against can help. I yeah, think. I I really like. I mean, yeah, some more time would have been nice. Yeah. But, <laughs> but we really did like kind of just we had these really long days and they were, they were really really long days. Uh, but at the end of one of the very long days, the, like one of the final scenes was with Debbie Harry. And it's this very short, weird scene. That's the episode that uh, Julia and Scotty were inspired by uh, After Hours, the Scorsese movie. And it's just, for the most part, it's Julie and I with some celebrity cameos like wandering around New York. We're trying to make a writer's packet together, you'll see. But um, at the end of the day, Debbie Harry just like walked in. Yeah and looking like Debbie Harry. Yeah, like, amazing. And we were the entire crew, we have like really young, bro -y dudes like in their 20s on the crew, and they were all like, I would still fuck Debbie Harry. They, like, <laughs> it, was, it was literally like she came in and everybody like just stopped and stared. <laughs> and, yeah. and she's like 70 or something, and it, it's just like, <laughs> no, she is. It was, it was legitimately like magical. Yeah, it was like, like, a, um, like a, it wasn't real. It was like yeah. an image, just like, like, a, like a hologram yeah. or something. Um, um, and it wasn't just like her being like an icon, it was just purely her beauty it was and then and then as I was staring at her I realized that she was ignoring being because she's so used to being stared at like mm. she would just sort of walk around like not making it awkward for you but because I mean think about looking like her her whole no life kidding. like even before yeah. she was in Blondie like, uh, don't you wish like <clears throat> don't you wish every photo of you was just like a studio 54 picture where you were just like yeah. it was like black and white <laughs> yeah. and you're like you had like you're so flat chested and your shirt was open and you were just perfect like talking to like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bianca Jagger and like yeah. everyone was just smoking and just there's like an like a, someone's got like an apple up to their ear or whatever the fuck. Well, that was the, someone else is yeah. handing you a top club, hat. Yeah. And yeah, it like, all works. It's just it black and works. white. Was, everyone's so coked out. It's just perfect. Debbie Harry's like, <laughs> Debbie Harry's like aesthetic perfection coincided with like the candid in a way. Yes. That, like it was just like, oh, who's ready for a candid? This one. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all comedy people. And of course we have a lot of our great comedy friends around the show, but like, you know, we're like, eh, comedy people, oh, right. you know. <laughs> and Debbie, like this like legendary rock star walked was... in and it really woke us up and yeah. we realized that we are not stars. <laughs> not even close. Not in that way. Um, not in that way. But it really did lend, it was like our 11 o'clock like little, you know, kick in the ass, like coffee boost that we were yeah. able to then do a scene where it was just you and me and a, a very disappointed crew that were just like, <laughs> yeah. oh, what do they want to light the redhead again? <laughs> yeah. All right, <laughs> what I can do. But yeah, that was, that was awesome. That was really, really That's a pretty cool. good behind the scenes uh, story is, right there. Mm -hmm. That is a pretty good, <laughs> check that one right up. There you go. Yeah, if Legs McNeil is writing another oral history, we can contribute oh. to that. <laughs> Guys, Legs McNeil! <laughs> Please, kill me. Wow, we're still here. I don't know why. I know, I feel like we're, too, we're running long. By the way, just one more quick thing about Kevin Spacey. No, no. We had, Hold on. We had at least one Kevin Spacey joke in every script. <laughs> but now, there, now there's only like four or five. <laughs> On that note, uh, congratulations on the new show. It comes out in August. Amy, Billy, Julie, thank you guys so thank much. You, Mark. <laughs>